This book presents architectural elements developed in Japan over a period of 17 years. Detailed drawings and photographs show work actually executed in various buildings. We hope that this work will be of interest and value to the younger generation and that it may serve as a starting point for further architectural development. It is also our intention that this book should demonstrate, not by abstract phrases but by actual examples of work constructed, one way of satisfying the numerous demands of modern man in housing and other kinds of building. It must be constantly restated to laymen as well as to professionals that contemporary architecture is not the desire for expressing individuality, nor the desire for new and bizarre forms, nor is it merely another fancy of designers. The work of those modern designers whose efforts are chiefly in this direction will soon be added to the heap of discarded fashions. It is only natural that aesthetics should have to be revised in order to keep pace with the startling progress of man in every branch of applied science, such as engineering, sanitation, transportation, and to keep abreast of man's new outlook on life. The aspiration toward a higher level of aestheticism necessitates a restatement of the principles governing truly great architecture of all ages. Thanks to the heroic pioneering in discovery of fundamental principles of masterminds like Le Corbusier, architectural designing has reached in all countries a level decidedly higher than that of the periods immediately preceding ours. Architects are actually beginning to create again in the more healthy way of their brothers, the engineers, and because of their newly acquired understanding of truer aesthetics, are beginning to cooperate with them intelligently and harmoniously. We have put into this book the old and the new, the things we created as well as things gleaned from many sources, and we have tried to show how to use them and why. A large part of the details and architectural elements contained herein have Japanese characteristics as seen from the aesthetic functional point of view and from that of the craftsmanship so highly developed in Japan. The climatic and seismic conditions peculiar to Japan also had to be met. It is shown clearly that we have tried to get to the root of the problems and change without fear the solutions of our predecessors in order to meet modern needs. We have, in a few cases, found that excellent combination of virtues which has been reached in the Japanese umbrella or in the first simple steel pipe chair to which nothing can be added, from which nothing detracted without loss. Nothing seems farther from the truth than to summarize the achievement of contemporary architects by calling it the international style of architecture. The misguided efforts of the period preceding ours, implanting Greek or Roman or Gothic or Renaissance forms empty of meaning in America or the Orient without regard to local conditions both aesthetic and practical, were in fact much nearer to internationalization. The first principle which all great architecture teaches us is to regard local conditions as the one known basic factor from which to start, and to allow the structure to take the most logical shape dictated by these local conditions. Thus flowers and animals do in different climates. From the Japanese, we have learned the value of the natural substance and surfaces of materials, and we avoid artificial finishes and condemn imitations. When selecting materials, we consider not only their practical values, but also their natural colors and textures, creating in that way true harmonies which outlast any fashion. This requires excellent workmanship, which is as essential in a truly good modern building 
as it is pure and perfect structural engineering. Antonin and Noemi Raymond <laughs>